I feel as creative now as I've ever felt. I'm full of ideas and I'm full of excitement. But I'm like a car that does not go faster than second gear. So I can have moments of incredible frustration where I'm like, I want to get on the highway, I want to drive for eight hours, and I want to like blare hard rock. You know, I think the painting just goes on like, you, you know, you still brush your teeth, still wash your hair, I still paint it. I guess you have to say an artist's life is um, a toss up, it's a crapshoot. And I took it, I did that life. It's funny to think of yourself on camera, like when you were, when I was originally starting out as an actress, <laughs> then you realize you're not going to be on camera making out with Johnny Depp, you're going to be on camera with latex gloves on, cleaning out baby bottles. Why would you even do all that? What's so fun about it? Because it's the only thing that makes me feel 100% free and 100% myself and 100% like I'm living life fully. All right, I'll go with that. You know, I don't think my kids need art like I do. I, I really just really needed art. And when it was missing in my life, I think there was a big gaping hole. Um, I felt I had a secret place to go that wasn't just laundry, shopping, children, diapers, and nursery school. Um, I, I felt I was keeping my sanity. It, it seemed to be, it, it never occurred to me to say, I'll get back to it sometime. It was, I wanted to get to it every day. I do from time to time, sort of like, okay, what is this picture gonna look like when I really do wanna get in three hours of writing? I was like, hey, baby's gonna come. We're never gonna have eight hours again. We've got to learn to work in little bursts. So I just set up all my supplies, and I'm like, let's just practice. Like, even if you only paint 10 minutes, let's just try to learn how to paint in increments. Gosh, I mean, I probably won't paint for at least two months. I mean, is it two months? Is it six months? Is it eight months? I mean, <laughs> you know. And like two months, I'm like, yeah, that'd be okay, because I'll have this show and stuff will be happening. If it's eight months, that means I'll lose the thread again. Today is my due date. That's me, Christina Robbins, filmmaker and soon-to-be mother. I'm sure my mother and father would probably tell you I just came into the world this way. I just wanted to light the world on fire, you know, and, I, and be different. And I mean, the more, the older I get and the more humble I get and realize, like, what that really is, I want to be heard. I have this desperate desire to be heard and understood. And who doesn't? In the fiction, I could take control of the situation, which I could not control in real life at all. I could give it a different outcome. I could. Um, be in charge instead of be helpless and I could also make a good story out of it. I think that things may come up in which I need to deal with life in that way because my power is in my pen. Hey. Hi, Mommy. I can't remember, I, it just seems to me like the minute we met that was it. We were good friends. We were close. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, she, for me, she was a soulmate from the minute I met her. Like, I, I say this in all sincerity, like, she saved me from a mundane life. Is the worst part that you're judging me and you can't believe what a shitty parent I am? Or is the worst part that you think I'm judging you and I can't believe what a shitty parent you are? I think it's both. <laughs> But I don't think you're a shitty parent. Well, I don't think you are either. But at the same time, there's stuff where I'm like, because oh, breastfeeding is a perfect example. I would shoot myself in the head if I were still breastfeeding Finley. There is no question about it. Now, am I like thinking you're fucking nuts for still breastfeeding? Yes. But I'm also thinking you think that I didn't work hard enough at breastfeeding Finley. Yeah, I hardly even think about you and Finley breastfeeding. I mean, I almost, I just about never think of it. Right. And I'm actually about to shoot myself in the head. <laughs> Christina is never someone I'm going to be ambivalent about. Never, never is it going to be like, yeah, that was fun back then, but we've just grown apart. If, if we aren't, if there's an issue, I'm going to feel it as a pain, and that pain is going to be as intense as any joy. So it's either going to feel good or it's going to feel bad, but it's never going to be neutral been friends such a long time and we've impacted each other's lives so much that we just wouldn't be who we are. You know, if you're dealing on a soul level, it's also about people helping you grow. And that's not something you can fully understand when it's happening to you. You know, my, no matter what I feel, my love for her never dim, will never diminish. If someone said, are you close to your daughters, I'd want to say I'm as close as could possibly be. But I don't think it's the truth. I'm, I'm as close as they let me be. I think the children tiptoed around me sometimes, and so, I was happy to have them be a bit afraid of me and of my reactions to things. That was the way I controlled them, which I needed to do in order to, um, and, I, and I didn't know better. I just didn't know better. You know, you can get, you can find yourself rather unexpectedly just like in a little hole of despair. Like, why, you know, why is humankind so shitty? Why is all these shitty things going on in the world? Why can't I keep my house clean? Why are there grease stains on my sofa? Why does my bathroom smell like a public urinal? Just things that you're like, this is not who I was supposed to be, right? You know, it's just, it's insulting and depressing and you need to be fixed. Music and, and making art, you know, fixes it. It fixes it, puts the sheen back on everything. Olive is not the kind of kid I expected. I thought I would have a shy, introverted, bookwormy kind of kid. And I, I mean, I guess I thought I would have a kid that's the kind of kid I think I was. She's not mellow at all. And I mean, I think she is like a really cool person and I would not want to change her even though aspects of her personality are t are, can be tiresome to my personality. I guess what I feel bad about is her wanting something from me and me feeling frustrated at her because she's interfering. Oh, see, I say it, I'm like, oh, that is awful. You can't even say that. Is your mom an artist? She used to be. It looks like, it looks like I have not made it in the art world. <laughs> It looks like I have not made it in the art world. You know, there's these little successes that make you think that the outside world wants to see the work that you make. And then there's this whole load of rejection that you deal with that says the world doesn't want to see your work. And your work is not interesting to the rest of the world. It's only interesting to you. I guess what, what I'm realizing is that I am more of a mother than I thought I was. 
Like I like remember that storm at Burning Man and we're holding the tent down. Oh right. And at first you're like, oh my god, this is really exciting. Look, it's like you can see the wind blowing and all four of us are like holding on to the tent. Right. It goes on for like an hour. About an hour later, you're like, I am really, really fucking bored of holding this tent down. I don't even right. give a flying fuck if this tent flies away. Well, and can we just we had do the, something different? Yeah, and because we had the luxury, like you can't let go of the tent when you're a mother. Exactly. Because we had the luxury, we were like, this is too hard. Just fucking let the tent blow away. And we let go. And the yeah. whole thing got yeah. destroyed. Yeah. It's like, whatever, so we don't have a place to sleep. I just want to sit down and have a ding dong. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but with the kid, you're like, when can I let the tent go? Like, is there, a, like, no, I'm still holding on to the tent. Right. And I'm like, wow, this is a lot of work.